my brothers and my sisters, we greet you in the mighty, magnificent, and matchless name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Well, they're predicting a storm coming this afternoon. Everybody around town is getting ready. They're stocking up their shelves. They're making sure they have enough to stay in the house during the storm. But I've got another announcement today. Today, Jesus is coming to see us. He's going to stop by St. James. He's going to stop by your house, your job, your place, wherever you are. Get ready to meet Jesus. Because if it had not been for the Lord on our side, none of us would be where we are today. So thank you for joining us now help us to get ready by praising God by singing of God's goodness and mercy and by lifting up the Lord in all that we do this is our prayer in Jesus name amen 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 let us now join together as we sing our doxology praise God from whom all blessings flow Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son. I call to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. I'd rather be a doorkeeper of the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those who are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. Lord, in this holy temple, let all the earth keep silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, my strength and my redeemer together. O sing unto the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All the earth sing praises. Amen. Our opening hymn this morning, hymn number 221 in our AME hymnals, How to Reach the Masses, Those of Every Birth. For an answer, Jesus gave a key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Lift them up, lift them up. Still he speaks from eternity. And if I be lifted up from the earth, I'll draw all men unto me. Join us now as we sing this hymn. How to reach our masses, those of every bird, for an answer, Jesus gave a Bye. 
today we move ourselves into a posture of prayer as Richard Norris III comes to lead us in prayer be mindful of our brothers and sisters in that synagogue yesterday who were held captive by a terrorist amen we're one family in God and we pray for one another, I sent you at Richard Norris. This morning, as we approach the throne of grace, uh, we pray against all <clears throat> voter suppression efforts and efforts yeah, against yeah. women's rights. Yeah. We pray for the Supreme Court as they make decisions uh, regarding women's rights. We pray for equal and fair justice in the judicial system. We pray for all against all gun violence and killings in our That's community right. and pray That's for right. peace in our streets. That's right. We pray for our schools, students, and teachers. We lift up our newly inaugurated Mayor Ed Ganey. Yes, yes, we lift up the St. James AME Church in Mayfield, Kentucky, under the leadership of Pastor uh, Gloria Lasco. Yes. Lift up First Lady Elder Lisa Clay of Petra International Min Ministries. We lift up the Gregory, Gregory family as they celebrate the life uh, of their patriarch, Brother Norman. Yes. We lift up um, all the mothers of St. James. Yes. Mother Alma Burgess, Mother Essie Jones, Mother Anna Mae Davis, Mother Edwina Coleman, Mother Yvonne Peaks, Mother <clears throat> Vivian Davis, Mother Dorothy Gregory. We lift up the Reverend Maureen Cross Bolden. Yes, Lord. Lift up Mother Eva Lowe and Mother Edith Spencer. We lift up uh, Brother Andy Coleman, uh, Frankie, Jordan Fair, Mac Wade, Brandon Wade. Uh, we lift up Licentiate Monica Jackson. Lift up Larry Moore, uh, Gina Watkins, uh, Brother Paul Harper and his daughter Carly. We lift up uh, Freda Hill, uh, uh, Kaylin and Kevin Ford. We lift up uh, da, 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 Robin Griffin, Norman Gregory, Juanita Fulton Phillips. We lift up Dr. Lawrence Davis, Floyd Alexander Jr. We lift up the son of Sister Stephanie Drake. We lift up uh, DeAdrian James Harris, Maretta Brock. We lift up Russell Bowe, Talmadge Neal. Dr. Sylvia Ways, Sister Judy Lewis, Darren West, James Moore, Patrice Alexander. We lift up uh, Brother Carl Lane and family. We lift up uh, Robin Griffin, Aaron Harrison, uh, Pat Rouse, Andy Ford, and Robert Simpson. Yes. Uh, we lift up Sister Michelle Saunders, uh, Alexandra Real, Linda Dorsey, Samuel Jackson III, William Hong, uh, the family of Charlena Smith. We lift up Erica Mosby, Tunisia Johnson, Jeff Lalonde, C. Avery, and Maya. We lift up the Sif family and Oriole Love. Let us pray. O oh Lord, our God, when we in awesome wonder yes. consider all the worlds thy hands have made, 
we see the stars, we hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displays. Then sings our soul, our Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings our soul, our Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Lord, on this third Sunday in the year 2022, All right. we've come simply to affirm that you are great and greatly to be praised. That's right. That's right. Even as COVID is still ravaging our nation and our world, uh -huh. even as uh, violence still uh, prevails in many of our lands, yeah. even as uh, uh, we still don't know how to love one another properly, well, well. we do declare, God, that you are still great yes. and greatly to be praised. Yes. This morning, God, we ask for a special blessing on the congregation Beth Israel in Houston, Texas. Right. Understanding, God, that we may believe different things, we may uh, wear different things, but we are all one family and we are all one people called by one God. We lift up all of our governmental leaders as they are striving to, uh, number one, get an end and a handle on this pandemic and also restore voting rights. We lift up all of our ecclesiastical leadership uh, from, the, from the pastor to the presiding elder to the bishops of the church as we navigate these trying and tumultuous times in ministry. And God, we ask this morning that you would pour out a supernatural blessing on this place we call St. James. Right. Even though there might not be many in the physical uh, church building this morning, we understand, God, that you have not called us to go to church, well, but you've called us to be the church. Yes, so uh, God, help yes, us sir. now to worship yes, you in spirit and in truth. Yes, yes, yes. God, as we prepare to celebrate the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. on tomorrow. Uh -huh. Let us remain true to what his mission really was, yeah. a yeah. radical reimagination of yeah. love. Yes. Yes. Help yes. us to love our neighbors even when our neighbors don't love us. Uh -huh. Help us to love our neighbors even when we can't see our own way. Well, Help us to love ourselves us just as you love us. Yeah. Now today, God, somebody needs to hear a word from you. Somebody is in the midst of a terrible situation, a dark storm, and needs a breakthrough, needs a miracle. And they're thinking, God, that miracles only used to happen in the Bible and they don't happen anymore. Oh, but God, today we ask that you would loose the shackles from our feet and lift the burdens from our back and help us to know that life is still worth living. And so we ask a special uh, blessing on your manservant who shall stand behind the sacred desk and proclaim the unsearchable riches of your word. Give him a word that will prick our hearts and make us feel like we want to go on. We ask that you pour out your blessings upon this place we call St. James. As we sing, as we pray, as we read scripture, we, pour, we ask a special blessing on all of the ministries of St. James, whose officers will be installed later today, and help them to know that what they're doing is not just a job, not just a church thing, but it is a ministry that they ought to give their best because they're not serving the people, they're serving you. And when it's all said and done, God, we promise we won't get amnesia about who it was that actually did it for us. We promise, promise that we'll give honor to whom honor is due. Yeah. And we'll give you our name, all the glory, the honor, and the praise. Yeah. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray this prayer. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This morning, our scripture is taken from Acts, the 10th chapter, uh -huh. verses 34 through 36. That's Acts 10, 34 through 36. And the word of God reads, Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God treats everyone the same. Yeah. He said he expects people from every nation. He accepts anyone who has respect for him and does what is right. That's right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel. It is the good news of peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Yes. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be and thanks be to God. Yes. Amen. So blessed to have the evangelistics lifting God up in music today. I thank God for them and I praise God for these brothers who are not ashamed to let the Lord use them through music to lift our spirits in worship. So my brothers and sisters, I now share with you now my male chorus we call the evangelistics. Amen. Same brothers. <laughs> Two, oh, one, two, three.
Amen. Well, I want you all to know that it is the will of the Lord to bless us. All right. It is also in his will that we be tried or tested. So the test came yesterday. Okay. The news said we were going to get snow. Uh-huh. Everybody's in a panic. Yeah. Everybody is running to the grocery store, yeah. standing in line, waiting to check out two and a half hours. Well. Nothing on the shelves this morning. <laughs> this was a test. Okay. Because the scripture said that the birds don't worry about what they're going to eat. Okay. So why should we? Okay. This was a test. Where's your faith? Uh-huh. Where do you stand in your faith okay. to God? He's testing us to see, are we going to worry about tomorrow? Uh-huh. Are we going to worry about our finances? What are we worrying about, church? Well, this morning, it's a test. This morning, it's a test. Okay. Your finances, are you going to write that check? Are you going to go on the app and give what is due to God? All right. He's testing us mm -hmm. this day. Will you pass the test? Will you give with an open heart and an open mind? to the ministry here at St. James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I challenge you, yeah. church. Yeah. I want you to pass the test. Yeah. You can give this morning through our website. You can give through Givelify. Uh -huh. You can send it in the mail right here to the church at 444 Lincoln Avenue, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, 15206. Yeah. If you live near the pastor, just go to the house and knock on the door. Church, this is a test. All right. Will you pass the test? Amen. 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 Also, this morning is Installation Sunday, where the officers of this church will stand not only before Pastor Harris, the members, but stand before God and say that they will be those officers yeah. to uphold this ministry, to pray for this ministry, to give to this ministry. We are also reminding the officers that we are requesting a $25 donation. Mm -hmm. Not because you're paying for an office, All right. but because you believe in the ministry here at St. James. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a test. Mm -hmm. This is only a test. Amen. Amen. I just got scared. Amen. If I was going to pass the test or not. Amen. I want to thank St. James Church for doing what they do. Our current balance in our demolition rally is $21,945.48. We just need $3,055 more dollars. Amen. To reach our $25,000 goal. Amen. One person can just write us a check. We'll be done with it for $3,055. Two people can give us $2,000. Uh, that's got to be wrong. $1,527.50, and we'll be where we need to be. Six people can give us $509, and we'll reach $25,000.
or 12 more people can give us the $275 we're asking for. Thank you for what you've done. If you've already given, please consider to keep on giving so we can reach our goal. I tell you, every week is something here in St. James. This week is the demolition of our old parsonage. Amen. We got to fix some stained glass windows. One estimate is $22,000 for just one middle section of pane glass. Lord have mercy. How are we going to keep on doing it? Well, the Lord has not failed us yet, and God's people have not let the Lord down. So keep on giving. Give so we can reach our $25,000 goal. So when I go to court on the 26th of this month, I don't have to leave Clayton there with a pack of cigarettes and a Bible. Amen. We just praise God. No, I'm just kidding. We have that little joke going on in the church. Amen. I would never, never let my friend go to jail by himself. Amen. But please give. Thank you for what you've already given, and we praise God for you. Prayer meeting and Bible study are back in session, and on each Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we start our prayer meeting, and I ask that you would join us through our app, through our Zoom uh, address, that you would join us for prayer, and then at 7 o'clock, we start our Bible study. We're in the second chapter of Revelation. I think we finished three of the churches last week, and we got to go into the fourth church this week, so join us as we're in the book that everybody's afraid to read and does not understand. So join us for Revelations chapter 2. We'll pick up at the fourth church and we praise God for all of you. Amen. Let me thank my evangelistics. Brother Webster, Brother Yanders, Brother Clayton. They sounded just like the mighty clouds of joy. And I praise God for that. The music must come from the soul. Music must come from the spirit. And the spirit is not concerned about how you sound. The spirit is concerned about will you open your mouth and make a sound. The evangelistics are making a joyful noise to the Lord. And I just love them to death, love them to life. I praise God for them. They're going to sing and get me ready to preach on this installation Sunday. And this Sunday that we celebrate the life of Dr. King. They're going to sing. I'm going to get happy. I'm going to preach. You're going to get saved. You're going to change your life. And life is going to be better because we worship together today here at St. James. So come on, evangelistic. Lift up the Lord in song as we prepare to bring the word this morning. Amen. Yeah. 
Father God, we recommend Jesus for all our needs. And we recommend Jesus because he's never failed us yet. Now God, speak a word of encouragement, speak a word of empowerment. Speak a word, God, that as we live our lives and as we meet our relatives, our friends, and our neighbors, Help us to recommend Jesus to meet the needs of all people. Now, God, speak to me. Please speak through me. More than anything else, speak in spite of me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I want to thank the men, yes. Brother Clayton, Brother Webster, and Brother Yanders. But I really want to thank Brother Yanders for that song about I recommend Jesus. Yeah. I praise God for that recommendation. It's been a rough week. I've had phone calls and messages about people who are going through things in their lives. I'm praying for Rita and Kathy in the celebration of their father, Norman. I'm praying for his wife, Sister Mary, who's not of the Christian faith but I'm praying for Mary. I'm praying for a sister in Homestead who called me the other day about her son being arrested for murder. And she needs some pastoral care. I prayed with her. It's been that kind of a week. I got a call the other day about one of our members is not doing so well. And once again, I had to get on my knees and ask God to do something about the situation. That's right, Yanders, I recommend Jesus. And because of Jesus, we stand here today. I invite your attention this morning as we lift up the officer's installation today. I lift up Matthew's scripture, chapter 9, verses 37 through 38. Matthew 9, 37. Through 38. Then Jesus said to his disciples, The harvest is huge. Amen. But there are only a few workers. So I asked the Lord of the harvest to send workers out into his harvest field. Then I look at Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 8 to a very familiar part of scripture. Isaiah 6 and 8, which says, Then I heard the voice of the Lord. He said, Who will I send? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. I want to lift up this subject today. Stand up and be counted. Stand up, Alexi, and be counted. This weekend, we celebrate the life and legacy of one of the greatest persons within our modern day culture. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King was one who stood out among all the citizens here in this country. Not just the African American community, but he stood out among the entire nation, and I would say the world. Dr. King stood for equality. He stood for righteousness. He stood for justice. And he stood for mercy. Dr. King took a stand. He stood up and he's counted now among our heroes 
and sheroes of our lives. Taking a stand is more than just talking about the needs of people and what's wrong. When you take a stand, it means that you are involved in work whereby people are being liberated and set free. Taking a stand means that you spend your energy doing something about the problems and the issues and the conditions our world is in. Dr. King took a stand and because he stood up, we are benefactors of a new understanding of who we are in God and who we are as a people. Because of his stance, now we can count him to be one of the people that stood out in our lives. And because of him, we are blessed through God. Well, the church is challenged today to stand up and be counted. We are biblically and theologically challenged to take a stand and make a difference in our communities and in our world. Jesus, according to our scripture this morning, had been going around through the towns and around through the villages. The word says he was preaching and teaching. And it says he was healing all kinds of diseases. But the words also said when he saw the crowds, he felt deep concern for them. Jesus realized that if the church and its followers don't do their job, then people are left with very little hope. If this is true, Jesus makes a profound statement here. He says the harvest is plentiful. It's the laborers that are the problem. Our job, our ecclesiastical responsibility is to stand up so we can be counted among the faithful and the committed. Well, you might be saying, let somebody else do the work. You might be saying, you're not talking to me. You must mean somebody else to do ministry. And you might be feeling that you are inadequate and you cannot become involved in ministry. But you are the one God has chosen to do the job. You are the one that, that, that God has allowed to be born for a time just like this. Quit making excuses. Quit denying your calling. Stop thinking it's just the preacher's job, but it's everybody's job who's been saved and sanctified and free from sin to stand up and be counted. Then I heard a voice, Isaiah says, and it was the voice of the Lord. And the voice said, who will I send? Who will go for us? I said, here am I, send me. First, I want to point out that we must hear the voice of the Lord. Somebody say, hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord. God speaks to us this morning <clears throat> as we are installing offices here at St. James Church. God speaks to our minds and God speaks to our spirits. You would not be asked to serve if the Lord was not speaking. The question is, do you hear the Lord? Isaiah says, I heard the Lord. Who are you hearing? Who has your ear? Who's speaking to your spirit? What other voice are you listening to? Are you listening to the voice that says it's impossible? Are you listening to the voice that says it's too hard? Are you listening to the voice that says that's somebody else's responsibility? I dare you this morning to open up your spiritual ear and hear God calling to your name. The hymn writer said, I can hear my Savior calling and I'll go with him all the way. Will you hear the Lord this morning? Will you hear his sweet voice speaking to your mind and to your spirit telling you that you might think you're weak, but I'm going to make you strong. Stand up and be counted. Secondly, we must respond to the Lord's calling. The word says Isaiah didn't just hear the Lord, but he responded to God. Your response can either be negative or it can be positive. 
You can either say yes to his will and yes to his way, or you can choose to ignore the Lord and simply say no. God calls you for a time just like this, and you must respond to God in ministry. You might not be ordained. You might not have a collar around your neck and a robe over your clothes. But you are called of the Lord and your responsibility is to respond to God's call. If God says pray, then you ought to pray. If God says fast, then you ought to fast. If God says study my word, then you ought to respond and study God's word. Not only should you hear the Lord, but you should also respond. Respond to the Lord. And then lastly, in this short sermon, we want to talk about our responsibility to commit. Jesus says, the harvest is huge. You know how Bernie said when he was running for president? It's huge. The harvest, one scripture says, is plentiful. It's the laborers, the people. The ones who should be doing ministry where the count is down. Isaiah not only hears, Isaiah not only responds, but Isaiah commits. He says in the word, here I am, send me. Church, it's time for us to commit. In a day when COVID is so rapid, in a day when heartache is being felt in our families, in a day when our children are running crazy, in a day when it's a, it's a shame to send our children to school and we must keep them home to protect them, in a day where we see bad news all around us, we must hear, we must respond, and we must commit. God calls you and God calls me to do a job to complete a ministry, to work in the vineyard, to do something, to let somebody know God is real, to let somebody understand God can help you, to help somebody realize that the Lord will work it out in God's own time. Our job as officers, as clergy, as members is to hear, respond, and commit. Your responsibility this morning, whether you're a Sunday school teacher or the custodian, is to hear, respond, and commit. Your obligation to the Lord, because he saved your life, is to hear, respond, and commit. It is your duty, because the Lord stepped into your life and did a miracle in your life, to hear, respond, and commit. We today, who call ourselves the church, might be virtual, might be on Zoom, might be on Facebook, might be on YouTube, but that's not determining who we are. We are the sons and daughters of Alan. We are the ones that we call the church. We are the ones that God reached and snatched us out of iniquity and brought us into salvation. You and I make up the ones who believe that God can and God will. Oh church, I want you to hear, I want you to respond, and I want you to commit. God called you to be a steward. God called you to be a trustee. God called you to be a class leader. God called you to serve as officers in the church. But I want you to hear, I want you to respond, and I want you to commit. I know I put your name down on paper, but I didn't put it down, amen, without any thought and without any prayer. I got down on my knees and said, who can I have for the steward? Who can I recommend for trustee? And I wrote the name down. But God spoke to my heart and told me to write your name. I want you to hear, I want you to respond, and I want you to commit. I didn't just write your name out of happenstance. No, the Lord put your name on my heart. Your name might not be Isaiah. Your name might be this. Your name might be that. But do you hear the Lord calling to you today? Say, who can I send and who can go for me? 
I want you to say, here I am, use me, Lord. I want you to say, here I am, help me, Lord. I want you to say, here I am, walk with me, Lord. I want you to take the call of the Lord upon your life and hear, respond, and commit. Hear, respond, and commit. Hear, respond, and commit. Hear, respond, and commit. Can you say hear? Come on now. Can you say respond? Can you say commit? When I was younger, you know I like hymns. We would sing in the church. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all and all. Hear, respond, commit. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washes white as snow. I'm talking to you this morning. I'm challenging you to hear, respond, and commit. I hear the Savior say, Thy strength indeed is small. Child of weakness, watch and pray. Find in me thine all in all. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. I want you to hear God is calling you to do labor in the vineyard, to work in the church, to do something like Martin Luther King, to make a difference in somebody's life, in your community, or in the world. The challenge is to hear. The challenge is to respond. And then the challenge is to commit. I know you don't think you're worthy. I know you don't think you're right. I know you want to clean up your life a little bit before you really step out and say, Lord, use me. But you can't wait around, play around, hang around. Choose today who you're going to serve and serve the Lord with gladness. Challenge is yours to be a child of God or be out of the ark of safety. I don't know about you, but the best thing I ever did was hear the Lord, yeah. respond to the Lord, and then commit to the Lord. It took me a while to make sure it was God's voice because I was hearing my friends. Hmm. I was hearing my colleagues. I was hearing my posse. I was hearing those that I hung around with. You don't want to be no preacher. Church ain't going to do nothing for you. And at first, I listened to what they were saying. But then one day, I heard the voice of Jesus say, come unto me and rest. Lay down thy weary one upon my breast. I heard it. And I knew it was the voice of God. I challenge you today to hear God speaking to you, wherever you are, and to allow God to use you in ministry and in service. Put your name in the chat. Put your name on a message. Put your name on a voice call. Leave it on our recordings. 
whatever you have to do to say today I'm hearing, I'm responding, and I'm committing. We will call you and share with you and pray the prayer of faith and accept you into our family as God moves in your life. Hear, respond, and commit. I know you said you weren't going to tell nobody, but hear, respond, and commit. I know you don't want to be labeled as a holy roller, but hear, respond, and commit. Ain't nothing wrong with being a church man or a church woman. I laughed at my nephew one day when he was little. He was outside playing one of his friends, and his friends wanted to play cops and robbers and wanted him to be the robber while he would be the cop. My nephew said, I can't be the robber. And his friend said, why? If I'm the cop, you got to be the robber. He said, no, I cannot be the robber. He said, man, I'm trying to play with you. What you mean you can't be the robber? I'm going to be the cop. You just have to be the robber. He said, no, I can't play that game with you because I'm a church man. <laughs> In other words, his mind was hearing and responding and committing to God. Mm -hmm. So come on, give the Lord a try. Mm -hmm. You can't beat it. The Lord will bless your life. Amen. Stand up and be counted. Amen. What you mean? When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Stand up and be counted. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Stand up and be counted. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Well, Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Come on, come on. Oh, when they crown him Lord of Lord. Oh, when they crown him Lord of Lord. Well, Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the sun refuse to shine. Oh, when the sun refuse to shine. Yes, I want to be, I want to be in that number when the sun refuse to shine. Oh, when the saints Go marching in. Come on, come on. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Lord, I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in. Stand up and be counted. God bless you, my beloved. I praise God for you. I thank God for the spirit. And I thank God for moving in our lives. Today is Officers Installation Sunday. And I want you to understand, you're not working for Jimmy Harris. You're not working for St. James. You're not working for the president of your society or your committee. You are working for the Lord. I can't make it any simpler. I know the bishop sends me here, but I'm working for Jesus. And I ain't tired yet. Hello, somebody. If I was working for people, I'd have quit a long time ago. But today we reaffirm ourselves and who we are in the Lord. And we commit to doing the work that God has laid upon our hands. I'm going to ask Monica to come and stand in front of the altar representing all officers. You should have a copy 
If it was emailed to you this week on your phone or your iPad, I believe it's going to be up on the screen as we share in this installation ritual. Monica's going to represent you, but I want you at home to be reading and to be looking and to be thinking about what's going on in this moment. It is recorded of the apostles that when the earthly church, early church grew and increased in number, and the duties of church increased and became diversified, the church called its members together and chose persons of good character, full of the spirit of God and blessed with wisdom and leadership ability to assist the various ministries of the church. Leaders just chose, thus chosen were set before the apostles who laid hands upon them, praying for them and their duties, thus setting them apart in the presence of all assembled in the place of worship and consecrating them to the duties of their respective office. In like manner, the church, having first sought the guidance of the Holy Spirit, has chosen each of you represented here in my century Monica Jackson to fulfill a position of leadership and responsibility in sharing the various ministries of the church for the coming year. These are the questions I'm asking you right now. My brothers and sisters, in order that all may know your readiness and commitment to serve as leaders of this congregation, do you here and now publicly declare your determination to be faithful to the duties of the office of which you have been set apart. I do declare it with the help of God. Will you cheerfully, <laughs> will you cheerfully, Come on. <laughs> will you cheerfully give your time, energy, talent, means, that means your money, hello somebody, and goods to support the mission, ministry, and work of this congregation. Will you be open-minded and optimistic, op optimistic in your planning, patient in time of trial, diligent in face of difficulty, and above all, Christ-like in all your daily work and witness? I will, the Lord being my example and inspiration. By example and precept, will you nurture genuine Christian fellowship among all our members and promote the extension of Christ's kingdom in your own life, in the life of the church, in the life of our nation, and in all the world? With God's help, I will endeavor so to do. All right, this time, La Central Jackson is going to turn and face the congregation. Ain't nobody in the pew, but she's going to face the congregation. These pews is empty, but she's going to face the congregation on camera, on Facebook, wherever you are. Dear beloved, you have heard the declaration and pledge of these, our brothers and sisters, represented by Life Century and Monica Jackson, who as office bearers in our congregation will serve as our leaders during this year. What say you to these things? We rejoice to recognize you as our leaders in the work we share as members together in this congregation. We will look to you for inspiration and guidance in all those things which will enable us to be faithful members of the body of Christ and of St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church. Thank you. Will you now turn and face the altar? Having been duly received by your brothers and sisters of this congregation, I do hereby declare that you are officially installed to serve the world, the church, and your God. Let us pray. Direct, Direct us, O Lord, Lord, in all, all our doings with, with thy most, most gracious favor, favor and, and father us, us with, with thy, thy continual, continual help, help that, that in all, all our works begun, begun continued and ended in thee, we may glorify thy holy name and finally, by thy mercy, obtain everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the work I've done speak for me. May the work I've done speak for me. 
When I'm resting in my grave And there's nothing that can be said May the work I've done speak for me God bless you, thank you You are officially an officer in St. James African Methodist Episcopal Church And we thank God for you And we pray that we will continually do great things In Jesus' name, amen I have some older officers who've been serving, but I also have some new officers that I welcome to the boards and the committees and the ministries of St. James. We don't stop. We keep on praising God. We don't quit because of the pandemic. We find alternative ways to get the job done. Failure is only a step towards success because when we fail, we get back up and try it again. The only thing that beats a failure is another try. And a song says, if you try and fail in your trying, he'll understand and say, well done. God bless you, my beloved. We thank God for you. We're scheduled to have a storm tonight. (laughs) But I hear Sister Juanita up there in that choir box singing her song. The storm (laughs) passing over. Be safe. Stay home. You ain't got to go nowhere anyway. Amen. Put on your snuggy pajamas. Watch some movies. Amen. Enjoy home for change. Relax. Release. Let go and let God. This ain't the first time we got 12 inches of snow. That's why we got boots. That's why we got all weather tires. That's why we got bags of salt and solution in our garages. Yeah, we we ain't scared no snow. We used to, matter of fact, snow. Amen. We got something for the snow. We got God. (laughs) I don't shovel snow anymore because I got a bad back. My doctor told me, if God sent it, let God remove it. Hello, somebody. (laughs) Amen. Have fun, enjoy life. Protect yourselves. Be safe. They're recommending that we wear N95 mask. They would wait till now to recommend it. You can't get them on the internet. Everybody's out. But that's usually how life is. Next week, President Biden's going to have a internet uh, website that you can go on and get free home testing kits. I think you get two per household or something like that. Four. But uh, stop worrying about stuff. The Lord will make a way somehow. If beneath the cross I bow, he will take away your sorrow. Let him have your burdens now. Amen. That's what we used to sing in the church. I thank Monica for our offering invitation and stressing the point that if the birds don't worry, we should not worry. It's going to be good. It's going to be all right. Lexi, God bless you, our student at Duquesne. First time I've seen you in a long time. Amen. You're looking good. You know we're not doing in-person worship, but I let her come in this morning because I haven't seen her. Amen. And uh, what that song say, I love you and there ain't nothing you could do about it. Hello, somebody. Yeah. So we praise God for her. God bless you. Please join us every week virtually on Zoom, Facebook. Join us as we praise God. I thank God for my evangelistics. Amen. These brothers were singing this morning. Brother Yanders, Brother Webster, thank you. Brother Clayton, thank you. Uh, Howie and Ken, you know, I love both you guys. Amen. I almost called y'all to wind beneath my wings. Amen. But amen. Thank God for my ministerial staff. Andrew's not here. He's in Georgia getting ready for the missionary executive board meeting. Richard's here this morning back from home. I praise God for him. And uh, he got to leave this week as the president of the world, YPD and Young People's Department. Amen. He's going to Atlanta to share in the executive meeting. We praise God for him. Thank you, Andre, who really is my right hand. And uh, I thank God for all that you do for me and for the church and for the community. I want to thank Harold, my security. Now, next week he's leaving me, so I guess I'm on my own 
But that's all right. I got Jesus. As long as I got Jesus, I got enough. Amen. But God bless you, uh, Harold. I'm just messing with you, brother. I'm just messing with you. I thank God for you. Monica, you know I love you. All, you know, always by my side, always in my corner. She going with Harold. I ain't going to be mad at her. Amen. Pray for safe travel mercies. Amen. 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 Monica's going to come and remind us about our giving. We want you to listen to her. Uh, most times she doesn't make sense, but she makes good sense when she talks about giving to God. Amen. Respond and commit. You have to do that in your giving as well. Like I said earlier, this is a test. We have to hear, we have to respond, and we have to commit. Yeah. So continue to do those things, church, as we have been doing. You've heard the call, you've made the commitment, you are responding. Yeah. Don't stop now. Don't stop now. Continue to put your giving in the mail Continue to drop it off. Continue to use our website or use our app to give unto the Lord and give unto his ministry. It's not our ministry. It's his ministry that we're glorifying. Be blessed and be safe. Amen. Amen. Nobody thought the Steelers would be where they are. Yeah. We thought the season was over. Somehow, a miracle happened in that last game last week, yeah. And they made it to the playoffs. People are saying, wow, how could this be? Well, in my life, when folks said I wasn't going to make it, God showed up and God showed out. And because of the Lord, you and I are who we are in Jesus. So I want you to hear I want you to respond and I want you to commit. Once you've done all of that, all you can say is, let the church say amen. God bless you. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church. Gracious God, we thank you for these moments of worship and praise we have experienced today. We thank you for every shout, for every amen, for every movement that gave you glory. We ask God now that you would go with us as we leave this worship experience to serve in this present age. Bless all who are under the sound of my voice. Bless those who are thinking about church, thinking about God, who have Jesus on their minds. We're praying for the sick. We're praying for the unsaved. We're praying for the homeless. We're praying for those who are struggling. We're praying for those who have lost loved ones. We're praying for those who are sick with COVID. We're just praying, God. In our prayers, we know that you'll work everything out all right. Bless us now, God, as only you can. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and may the Spirit of the Holy Spirit Sweet spirit, be with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Oh, let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. God has spoken. So let the church say your heaven smile upon you hear respond and commit pastor harris here thanking you for joining us in worship today you've been a blessing to us it's our prayer that we've been a blessing to you i know that god's going to work miracles in our lives we just have to pray for one another you pray for me i'll pray for you watch god change things god bless you <laughs>